All right, so today I'm going to be talking about this article which was titled uh, Thermal Tolerance Generated by Plant Fungal Symbiosis. And basically this article wanted to address how fungus play a role in plant adaptation to selective pressures. And specifically in this article, what they were focusing on was thermal stress. And so before we get into what they did specifically, let's talk a little bit about symbiosis. Basically what this is, is a mutually beneficial relationship between the fungus and the plant in this example. And uh, by benefits, this can include uh, nutrition. So some of the byproducts or the waste products from the fungus can actually be nutrition for the plant. Um, there is some co-toxicity resistance. And also in some instances, if there is symbiosis, a plant can colonize certain soils that without the fungus, it would not be able to. So these are just a few examples of how um, the benefits of symbiosis work. But what they wanted to look at specifically in the case of symbiosis in this paper was how does this relationship affect plant adaptation to thermal stress? Plant adaptation is normally thought of as being controlled by genomics, but what the point they wanted to communicate in this paper was how actually the symbiosis between plant and fungus can play a role in that adaptation. So first they looked in a lab model and they looked at a field model. So first I'm going to go through how they did the lab model. So they isolated and sterilized the plant from the uh, Yellowstone National Park. And so they sterilized it from any fungus that it had from the field. And then they either mock inoculated it as a control or inoculated it with a fungus that normally colonizes this plant, um, which is the endophyte of choice, which is the curvalia. And then they put these in pots and then heated the root system with thermal tape at specific temperatures. And then they measured the growth of the leaf and the root mass of the different uh, mock inoculated or the actual fungus inoculated plant, um, basically to see how this inoculation affected the growth and ability of the plant to survive in these different temperatures. So first, um, the S is going to stand for symbiotic, and that's the one that has the inoculation of the fungus, and the NS is non-symbiotic, so the control. And at 50 degrees Celsius, you can see a little bit that the non-symbiotic is a little more yellow. It looks a little less healthy than the one that has the fungus. Um, but at 65 degrees Celsius, you can really see that difference has grown quite a lot, actually. And in the non-symbiotic, there's a lot more brown. Most of it is actually pretty dead. And in the symbiotic, the one that has the fungus, you can see that you still have a lot of leafy green plant mass. So it was able to tolerate the higher temperature much better when it had the symbiosis with the fungus. So this is what they did in the lab. Um, in the field, what they wanted to check is that, so we got this to work in the lab, but is this actually how things work when it's in the park itself? And so they did a similar procedure. They had the isolated and sterilized plant, which they either mock inoculated or inoculated with the fungus. And then they return that plant that has now either been mock inoculated or inoculated with the fungus, and they returned it back to soil in the National Park in May 2001, and they did different soil sites that had different temperatures in the park. And then they came back a year later and they measured the root and leaf mass of these plants at the different temperatures. So first we have at 40 degrees Celsius the symbiotic and the non-symbiotic plant in May 2001. And you can see that um, it's about the same mass when they planted it originally. But when they came back a year later, you can see when they measured the um, mass of the plants that the symbiotic plant had more mass originally. Um, they also did it at a site that was at 45 degrees Celsius, so now we've introduced that thermal stress, and you have symbiotic, non-symbiotic. Again, they're both about the same mass in May 2001, but you can see pretty dramatically that that five degrees of thermal stress, um, none of the non-symbiotic plants survived, whereas the symbiotic plant seems to have flourished just as well um, with the thermal stress, and this is all due to having that symbiotic relationship with the fungus. It was able to tolerate higher temperatures in the field. So the conclusions from this are that the endophyte colonized plants were able to tolerate higher temperatures in the lab and in the field, 
Um, oh, something I forgot to mention is that the fungus itself also had thermal protection. So what they were able to do was that in the symbiotic plants, they recolonized the, um, they were able to recolonize the family alone, the fungus wouldn't have survived. So this thermal protection went both ways. And lastly, again, the main point is that this plant adaptation to selective pressures is influenced by the symbiosis with the fungi. Good. Okay, this also the stuff stuff from the front showing.